What's up guys, it's Mo, and today I have a video for you on creating your own foil templates in Canva. Uh, someone requested this on another YouTube video and I thought, you know what, let's try it out. So we're going to do something similar to the other video that I did on making your own uh, Canva templates. I think it was like this one um, that you can then print and cut with your Cricut Explore. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to focus this on just the Cricut Explore. You can do this in um, Silhouette Studio, you would just make your image, save it, save a blackout file, trace over it, etc. But you can do this whole thing in Silhouette Studio. So maybe that's prompted me to do another idea of how to make your own foil templates in Silhouette Studio. I also kind of want to do one in Inkscape, but Canva is what we're focusing on right now. So this is going to be print and cut for Cricut geared towards that. I can't speak words today. So we're going to go to Canva. I have upgraded you guys, so you might see something different. I'm going to try and make sure I focus on just the free stuff because I've upgraded because I want to try to see if I can offer you guys some other things. Um, so there's that. But we're going to go here to create a design. And it should drop it down. Yeah, we're going to choose custom size. And we're going to make it the print then cut area of the Cricut Explore. So you can see this is one of my recent ones, 6.75 by 9.25. Um, but you would just go inches and then 6.75 by 9.25, which is the full print then cut area of the Cricut Explore. And you're going to hit create design. That's going to bring you up a new brand new canvas that you can work with. And my computer may do some lagging here. I think I've got too many files on it and I'm trying to do this voiceover or this recording and that might be causing some problems. So there might be some lag here, but your canvas is going to then be the full print and cut area of your Cricut Explorer. One thing I want to note or I want to share with you, not this, but you can, if you have Rakuten or Ebates, previously known as Ebates, you can get 40% cash back on your um, upgrade to Canva Pro if you want to. Um, so there's that. But the one thing I want to note is we're going to be making white squares. So we'll need to change the background to another color right now. And then once we're all done, we'll change the background back to um, white. And the reason we're going to be working in like white, I say white squares that we're just going to be, they can be any color right now, but you're going to change the, the squares to be white and your background to also be white because you'll have the print then cut, or I'm sorry, because you'll have the blackout file to work with. If you have Canva Pro, you should be able to delete your background color, just delete it and then save it as a PNG. I'm gonna go through that I think here too, just to share with you. So you should most 90% of this, you'll be able to do for free. Like you'll be able to do all of this for free, but I'm gonna share um, how uh, you would do it if you did have the upgraded version as well. So your printer, I'm gonna talk for a little bit. Your printer is not going to print anything that is white, unless you have like a pigment type of printer or a high end printer what is white on your screen is just not, there's no ink coming out of your, your printer because it's assuming that the backing like your paper is white and that's where the white comes from. Um, and so my sticker templates here, let's do this here for a second. Um, the sticker templates in the shop, you, I, I think it kind of confuses people sometimes. Um, this video is going to be long again. Uh, I think it kind of confuses people sometimes because you'll have something like, these are ones I just added. You'll have something that looks like a, a white square and it's, you're like, what, what does this mean? For the Cricut Explorer, you have to say, this is the object I want cut. If I were to not include those white squares, uh, you would this is not what I was clicking on. If I was to not include those white squares, you would not, um, your, your Cricut would not know what to cut. It becomes a little bit more, um, ambiguous, I guess, when you get into Silhouette Studio, you're not noticing the white squares because the background is white. It just looks clear or transparent or whatever to you. Um, but that is not the case. So I'm going to bring this over here, hopefully, and show you. Come on, you were loaded and now you're not loaded. So this here is what I'm talking about. This white square, nothing's going to print 
because your printer does not have white ink. I hope that makes sense. I know this can be kind of confusing. So your printer is not going to print this white square, but you need it for your Cricut Explorer to know to slice this whole square. So that, that's some information. Let's get into building our uh, template here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this background color to just be something obscure. It doesn't matter. I don't want it to be black because we're working with black and white and I don't want it to be white because we're working with black and white and plus you won't be able to see it if it's white. Um, there are a few limitations here, I will say. So uh, what we want to do is we want to go to elements and we're going to drop in some rectangles. So we're going to go to shapes and we're going to pick this as a square. We're going to drop in a square and I'm going to change this to, you can leave an orange, you could do whatever you want. I'm going to change it to white because I'm imagining this is my white paper. I'm also imagining this is my white paper, um, but it's blue for right now. And I just need the, the distinguishing between the background and the foreground. So we're going to line this up here. I'm going to size this. I'm going to do both the long vertical or happy planner size and the standard vertical size. So we're going to size this to one and a half inches wide. And you can see that little black box is, uh, is uh, popping up there. So one and a half inches wide. And then. We're going to 1.9. Boop. 1.9 inches tall. So that is your uh, standard vertical box. So we can make about four of these, right? Let's, I'm going to select this, hold down the shift key. No, I'm not. I'm going to take position. Okay. Since this background doesn't really exist as a background or doesn't really exist for me to click and select, I'm just going to select this one, do position right and top and then we'll highlight all of these and you can see like you're not highlighting the background when you're doing that because the background isn't really there if that makes sense maybe i'm complicating this too much you just need to have your background be a different color don't worry about it right now <laughs> so we have our like standard vertical boxes so now i'm going to hit Control d and duplicate it and i'm going to make a long vertical box so one and a half inches wide by 2.5 inches tall so now we have some long vertical boxes. One, two, three, position, right, highlight all of these, uh, top, and then space horizontally. So now we want to make our like bottom washi type of thing. I got to get my measurements out here. So you'll have, I'll leave, if I can remember, I'll leave the measurements down below, but um, I'm going to go off of uh, something I've already established. I, this is where we get into things, things can be kind of hinky. So you can't do like 4.75 as you saw when we size these things you can only do like a whole i don't even know what you would call this to one tenth decimal place you know you can only do one decimal place if that makes sense so we can only do that you can do 1.5 1.2 1.3 you can't do 1.35 so that's where it's going to get a little bit odd you, i would tell i would say you should err on the side of of uh, caution and create it bigger rather than smaller so that all you may need to do is use an exacto knife or something to trim down your washi on the on your page so and then you can center it and maybe trim it down at the bottom um but we can't do things like specifically you know to two tenths of a decimal place i have no idea i you they taught you that in like kindergarten and i don't remember it all so washi tape that i have in my kits is 4.76 wide for the right hand side of your standard vertical and by right hand side i mean left hand side for the left hand side 4.76 wide by 0.591 tall what i'm going to do is make this 6.6 inches tall and I'm going to make this four, what did I say? 4.75 ish. I'm going to make it 4.8 just to be, you know, cautious. So we'll take this position, right? Move it up a little bit. So this is for actually, you know what we can do? Let's take these guys. Let's group everything together. So this is going to be for your standard vertical, this section up here. This is going to be for our happy planner or long vertical here. So we have our left hand side washi. Now we want to duplicate it and do our right hand side washi. This one, I hope this makes sense. This one is 
6.375 wide, which we know we can't do that. So I would do something like 6.4 just to make sure I'm overcompensating. Now, again, if you want to make headers, you the common, um, I don't know, size of a header, I guess you would say, is one and a half inches wide by 0.25 inches tall. We can't do that. So we're going to have to do 0.3 um, to make our headers. So I'm going to fill up this little section here. I guess long vertical, you don't really have headers. You know what I mean? So there might not be something that you need to do. And again, you can do this all um, standard vertical, all long vertical. I'm just showing you how to do this on two pages. What I like to do and what I have done on the, the uh, foil templates or whatever in the shop is to give you two designs. So you'll have one of the same size, but you'll have one design here and one design here at the bottom, like one design here and one design here. And that way you're getting two designs. I think I've said this like multiple times, you're getting two designs for what I believe is the price of one. And so that way you can print this twice and then you have two designs. Like you don't have, it just, you, you're getting more for your buck, I think. So anyway, so now we'll do the bottom washi for the happy planner size. So I'm going to just duplicate this just because we have this already. So my measurements for the happy planner that I use regularly fit this a little bit better um, because they're rounder numbers, I would guess. So this is 0.6 wide and I have 4.5 as what I use for the left hand side of a happy planner bottom washi type of deal 4.5 okay next one is 6 i think it's like 6.5 or 6 even it's 6 even so 6 6 and the reason that is these differ from these is because in the long vertical style the boxes are butted up against each, up against each other in the standard vertical style they're separated so this is a, is different than this one so let's make sure this is aligned to the right aligned to the right you can also what you want to do is make sure whoops let's position bottom and then we'll space these things out you want to make sure you're taking up a lot of the space of the uh, template if that makes sense um that way you're just maximizing your space hopefully that makes sense what we can do is make that little side piece of that washi you know what i mean a little position left and we'll just make this 6.6 .6. so that's that little side piece of that washi you know what i mean um side piece we can make this down here too and what I usually do is like fill in that with an icon or something. So now, you know what we should do? Position. Tidy up. Ah, that's what that does. I'm going to delete these. Actually, you know what? what that does nope that's not what i wanted vertically is what i wanted position vertically i'm just trying to create create a nice little uh um layout for you guys position i just like when my things look all tidy and nice so now we can create more headers here And one more. Okay, looks good. So now we want to find some elements that we can use to create our little overlay boxes. I am going to go back to shapes, or I'm sorry, back to elements here. And I'm going to search for like, you can see some that I recently used. I'm going to make, let's make a bow one, for example. So I have this bow here, but I'm just going to go search for bow. And then you can also do these filters and select free and apply filters and that'll show you everything that's free oh that's a cute little bow um i don't know where i think i found that other that first bow under easter 
So you can see, oh, here's some nice bows. Which one do I like, etc. You want to focus on ones that will look good as a solid color. So let's go back. I'm going to type in Easter and I think these all should be free. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can find that bow again. If not, I know where it was hiding. Let's see. Okay, this isn't the exact same bow, but we're gonna use this bow. We're gonna turn everything, every color black. And we're gonna go back to, whoops, I keep forgetting this. We're gonna close this, we don't need this. We're gonna go back to shapes and we're gonna find like a, an outline of a square. So we'll insert this. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Then a way that you can play with the size, the width of this line is to make it smaller using the diagonal, I guess, scaling. And then once we go to move it up here, you can squish it like that. And that makes the line thicker or skinnier or whatnot. If you were to not scale it before you use the sides to make it bigger then um, the line is, is going to remain thick if that if that makes sense um, so center middle all i did was drag and select both of these and make sure that this is in the center here i'm going to take this and make this guy a little bit smaller and move this over here i'm going to zoom in zoom in this seems to be gray instead of black. So we'll make that black. I'm gonna position forward, make this a little bit smaller. The good thing is that these guides show up so they can show you when it's in the middle. And now you have a bow little foil box thing, right? Look at that. It was like super simple. Um, I'm gonna show you again what I mean by, I don't think I did a very good job of explaining this like scaling thing. So well, that shouldn't be, let's take it black. So you can see the line, the, the stroke, the weight, if you will, of this line is much bigger than the weight or the stroke of this line. And that's because if I were to just make this small like that, you see it where, you know, and if you like that, that's fine, go ahead and do it. But you see it's about relatively the same size, but the stroke is much larger. So if you squish it this way, and then adjust the width and the height, the stroke becomes smaller on the box itself. So, whoops, I'm gonna delete. I just hit Control Z to delete that. And then let's say you want a set of all of these bows. That's a little bit too big. You want a set of four, five, six, whatever bow things with a little bit of differences to them. So you can just hit Control D. We'll move it over to this one. We can position it later. Specifically, we can position it later. And now you can move this down here to the middle, you know, and we'll take this position center. Whoops. No. Nope. What I needed to do was drag and select this position center. It's already in the middle. So now you have mirroring little bows, you know, if that makes sense. And then let's say you could even move it over here and have it in the side and you could have four little bow template guys. Um, what I like, I like to do that. I like to create, you know, a cohesive looking, um, set. So then we would maybe take this bow here and create our own little like bow. I would start with the longer piece and create our own little like bow washi thing. You know, you do this and we can space it out later after we get, um, some filled in the way we like. Let's do this and we can drag and select. It's going to select this background piece too. So you just want to hold the shift key and that'll unselect the white washi position horizontally. That looks pretty good. The only difference, the only problem is you're not going to be able to set a clip, which is what I do in Inkscape to create these guys for you. So it's going to be a little bit off. We can take this, right? Duplicate it. And if you bring it up here and line it up, you can see we're missing a little bit. So the option is 
to play around with your bottom, you know, your biggest piece of washi and kind of maybe scale things down and use this as a guide. So all of these will fit in there. So maybe if I do another one here and select this all again and position horizontally, it may or may not work. Just, it just depends. We have to make this like a little bit smaller, even more. Move this over, position horizontally. I don't know. You know, you'll just have to, you'll just have to play with it. But any, whoops, any element that you can find to add that it, that can be turned all to black is going to help you create these templates. What am I even doing? I'm trying to highlight this and I'm just hitting all the wrong buttons. So now that'll fit kind of in there better. So then we can take like, you know, drag and select this, unselect our background piece, control D and fit these maybe in here like that, you know, and this hanging off, that's not going to matter that way because it's not going to print. So it's not really going to matter if you want to do it like that. Um, but then you can just position these maybe a little bit better to where it's not really going to matter. And there, now you have some bow bottom washi, etc. Same thing with your um, headers here, right? We'll just duplicate this, make it as small as we need to. These kind of look like butterflies when they get, to get a little bit smaller. Um, control D, that'll duplicate it. You may think, you know what, I think I want these to be a little bit bigger like that. Maybe we want this one moved over just a touch, drag and select, hold on the shift key and deselect the background header there horizontally. Looks great. We can also group these, uh, group control D and line them up. And now you have like some bow header kind of dealios. Yeah. So let's say you want to make uh, some, a themed thing. We're coming up on Easter, right? So like I did there before Easter and I did uh, free and apply and I found, you know, this bunny, put him in here. Doesn't matter what color he is. It could be a she. Doesn't matter what color the bunny is. You can even add text. Let's add text. Doesn't matter what heck color the bunny is, right? Because we're going to go and change it to black. So then we can add some text. Um, oh, that's pro. I don't want it. I want free. I want free. Free. Okay. So, hey, we could even use this, right? Let's scale this down. If you like this font, right? Happy. Easter. Look at that. Now you have like a, whatchamacallit, a quote box, you know, that says happy Easter that you can foil. Um, let's go back to elements and see what else we have for Easter here. There's like eggs. I found now some of these you'll, you'll, you won't be able to use. For example, this one, you can't, it doesn't come up to change its color. There's something special about this one that I'm not sure about. So you can't really change that one's color, but you can find, I think I found another one like this one. You definitely don't want to use any type of animated thing. You definitely do not. So this one we can change. Let's see that to black, this to white, and we can make this smaller and put it like right here. You can even put that little line around it to make like a fun little, whatever you do something like that. Um, I was trying to find different little stuff and like this. So this one, for example, there's a bunch of different colors in here, but if we change this all to black and you, again, you can just play around with this. You change this all to black. It kind of loses its definition, you know, like this bunny here looks better than this bunny here. So it might not be the best bunny to use in this, in this situation. Um, you want to look with something that has high contrast. So maybe one or two colors, like even this bunny outline would be good because he can be changed to black 
and then um, uh, you could foil foil that. So you know that's a good one. An outline like that is really good. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't even say you could do something like this because you could change. Oh, you can't. That one's like a weird picture thing. Uh, can you delete? Thank you. Um, so yeah, I would just play around. And then the same thing with making your uh, washi tape down here. I would always start with the bigger washi tape so that you can get a feel of how it's going to fit in the smaller washi tape since we can't really set any clips or do any cl uh, cropping or anything here. It's not going to, it's not going to really work that well. So I may move that over a little bit, uh, drag and select this. I'm going to hold on my shift key and unselect that background. So I just have these bunnies selected. I'm going to go to position. I'm going to select horizontally. It looks like I can, whoops, take maybe this many bunnies, control D and it'll fit right here in this. So that's a good one. And then maybe I can take three. I'm holding down the shift key and selecting the bunnies. So I select this one, hold down the shift and select the rest. Control D, duplicate, D as in duplicate, and then line it up here. And now you have a uh, bottom washi that's Easter themed. You know what I mean? So what we want to do now is I believe what we should do first is we should add a page. No, we shouldn't. We should delete that page. Just kidding. What we should do now is duplicate this page because we want to create a blackout file to use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this background and I'm going to turn it to white. Yeah, I'm going to turn it to white. And then I'm going to select everything on this page. Let's zoom out a little bit everything on this page and turn it to black. That's going to create our blackout file. We can delete these because there's a little bit of white in them. Delete that. So we have our uh, blackout file and we have a regular file. The thing we want to do here is take this and turn this to white. Now we want to download. Um, if you're, I, I, I'm not going to try the transparent download thing yet. I'm going to um, try what you need to do for if you're doing this for free. So what you need to do is create your files, change your background on this first file to white and change everything that is not your background to black. So you have your blackout file and your foil template, if that makes sense. Um, so then we will PNG all pages download. This is going to download as a zip file. You'll just unzip it or whatnot and go, go from there. If you, this is like the same, uh, technique as we did the last time I did this, this is a file that you can use over and over and over again. So you'll just select your background. It doesn't matter what color it is. You can change it to pink and then, um, duplicate the page and make a brand new make a brand new set of uh, overlays for Christmas or for Fourth of July or for a birthday or for Halloween or whatever using the same the same method and you'll use the same blackout file as long as you don't move anything on here like any of these white boxes then this blackout file is going to work for every template you make because this is your template this is your back blackout file just delete all of the elements. So delete this and delete this and delete this. Keep all of your squares the same and you can reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. So I am going to go over to my, you can't see me right now, but I'm going to go over to my downloads and I'm going to unzip my file. Um, buh, 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 buh. Unzip, extract, and we're going to open up Cricut Design Space as well. Okay, so we have Cricut Design Space open. New project is where we're going to go. Then we're going to upload. I have both files over here. So we'll go to upload, upload image. I'm going to drag and drop. We're going to drag this white file in. Hopefully, here it goes. Um, complex, I always choose continue. We're not going to clean anything up because I know you guys know if we do this, which is the magic erase, everything is gone. And that's not what we want to do. So undo, continue, 
We're going to save it as a print and cut. I'm going to name it one because I'm not very good at naming conventions. Um, upload. And obviously this would be filled in. You would have, you know, your other designs and stuff. I'm just doing this as an example. Um, so now we're going to go upload image. I'm going to drag and drop again. Boop. We're going to do complex, continue. This one we are going to clean up. We are going to hit, click on the white. We have this magic erase thing. Click on the white. It's going to clean everything up. That's what we want to do. We want to have a blackout file. So hit continue. We're going to save this as a cut image. And again, I'm just going to name it too because I'm bad at naming things. And we know that the size of these, right, need to be 6.75 by 9.25 because that's the size of the print and cut area. That's the size we made our canvas in Canva. So I'm going to select both of those and hit insert images. If it imports it, it may import the cut image that we saved, that blackout file larger than we need it to, but we can just resize it. Yep, I knew that was going to happen. So um, you can see here also these are imported larger than the print and cut area. So what we need to do is somehow unselect these things. Okay, so leaving our proportions locked. 6.75, enter. Eh, sometimes it does this. Now it's fine. Boink. This one. Leaving our proportions locked. 6.75. Enter. 9.25. Boink. Okay. Right? We're going to make this on top. I am going to do something. Someone was like, oh, you should just insert a shape so we can see that it's transparent, etc. And I was like, you're right. I should do that. Why didn't I think that before? So this is our gray square that I'm going to do some stuff on. So um, we want to select, can we do that? Yeah, drag and select. So drag and select your white file and your black file. We're going to go to align center. It's going to put them right on top of each other. Then we're going to go to slice and we're going to wait a minute and it should slice, hopefully. Yep, here it goes. So now we have three things here. Some of these we don't need. This one, don't need. This one, don't need. This one, this is our print and cut file. This, this white here, we don't need this. This is just an example, right? This file is now our print and cut file. Now, obviously, like I said, you'd have designs here and designs here and designs here and whatnot, but I didn't want to take it that far. Now, you will need to print this. I'll leave a link to my foiling video. There's tips and tricks in my foiling video. The only thing that's not in that video is that you probably shouldn't use a laminator unless you can get a high heat laminator. My ha laminator, not high heat. I had to use, I bought a mink. I think the mink is great. You guys know, I just want you to make stickers with what you have. So it was really frustrating that I had to buy mink, but so, um, you will need to print this on a laser printer. And like I said, Laser, your laser printer, unless you have color toner, which you probably don't, your laser printer is not going to print the white. It's only going to print the black. And the black, the toner, is what your foil will stick to. So you will need to print this on um, a laser printer. And if you're using clear, glossy paper, you will probably need to cover the registration marks with matte tape. I use like the Scotch magic matte tape or something like that and that will help your Cricut to read your cut lines then you will take it over to your laminator and you will foil it and the kind of cool thing is um about these is that you can then like once you get done foiling and everything you can slice it kind of right here and then you can kind of store this in one section and store this in one section or however you want to make your templates um but that's how that's how i kind of do it so i hope that this video was helpful. Again, it was kind of long, but I wanted to be thorough with you guys. And you guys know, I just want you to be able to make stickers with what you have. So I hope I covered everything. If you have questions, uh, leave it down below. I will try to get the answers to it um, and whatnot, but I hope that this helped you. So I'm going to show you, let me just go, let me just take it this far. So we need to hit make it right. And you will see, it will look like when you go to print it, that there's, there's no spaces but the Cricut knows what to cut because it's a transparent image. Um, but yeah, so this is what you would print and then you would need to cover your registration marks with like matte 
uh, scotch tape, like I said. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope it also kind of explained um, the like templates in the shop too and why the some of them, all of them really have this white, but and what it is and what it means. So I hope that helped you there. Um, if you would give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if it helped you, if you found it inspiring, share it with your uh, Cricut friends. And yeah, I will talk to you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.